Aldric was in mourning again. Not that he'd ever actually shed any tears, but mourning all the same. The stoic old man would gaze at the portrait hanging in the small, locked room for hours, with nothing but a single candlestick for companionship. He always visited the room in the dead of night, when he thought no one was around to notice. Aldrich's beloved sister tragically passed when disease swept across Wester. While not horrid enough to call a plague, medicine and those capable of healing magics were hard-pressed to keep it in check. Unfortunately, she and many others were beyond saving. Her husband and a young son by the name of Delano were left to mourn her loss. After her death, the bereaved husband fell deep into drink and eventually took his own life a year later. Aldrich brought the young boy into his secluded manor and treated him as his own son, raising the boy to take over the small yet wealthy household when he came of age. The flickering candlelight underneath the doorframe suddenly vanished, signaling an end to the vigil as he carefully exited the room, locking it behind him with care. Delano, now a young man, hid behind one of the numerous pillars bearing the holy symbol of the Ecclesian order, listening to the old man's footsteps slowly passing by his hiding spot. Uncle Alderic was a devout follower and held some authority within the order. His lineage held the blood of respected practitioners of white magic, and he was no exception. Delano, too, held the same capacity for such arts and had been personally instructed by Uncle Alderic learning how to heal the wounds of others. However, as the lands of Wester were commonly haunted by the undead, he'd also learned various magics to help defend himself should the need arise. As Delano emerged from behind the pillar, he silently examined the locked door. The holy symbols typical to all of Wester's architecture were especially prevalent here, as almost every inch was covered with various charms to ward off evil. Delano assumed it was due to his uncle's wish that what little remained of his sister's memory should be held sacred, though strangely, Delano had never seen him visiting the family sepulchre where her body was interred. He approached the door, fingers stroking the cold handle that barred access. His uncle had stored an odd-looking book here a few months prior and had refused to give Delano a straight answer, claiming it was Ecclesian business. His curiosity had only grown since then, making it difficult to concentrate on much of anything. He quickly muttered a spell he'd spent a good deal of coin to procure, and felt his mortal frame lighten as his fingers passed through the door effortlessly. He took a steadying breath as he took a step forward, fully expecting to ram his nose into the hardwood. He went blind for a moment as he was momentarily inside the door, and then through the other side. He felt both exhilaration and guilt as he entered the pitch-black room. His success at casting such a difficult and exhausting spell was a testament to his hard work. At the same time, his intrusion was a betrayal of his uncle's trust. I'll just be in and out, he muttered to himself, just enough to get some answers. He drew a short knife and a candlestick he'd prepared for the task and muttered another spell to draw fire to the blade's edge. He carefully brushed the knife against the wick, as a careless swipe would destroy the entire candle. While magic couldn't solve everything in the world, and was actually fairly rigid in its uses, a clever mind like his could find ways around such restrictions. The first object to greet his sight was the large portrait of his mother. He couldn't help but stare at it. He'd almost forgotten what she'd looked like, the portrait having been hidden away shortly after her death. But her radiant smile and delicate features were so perfect, one could have wondered if the painter hadn't taken some artistic liberties. He felt an ache in his chest, as he could almost recall the touch of his mother's comforting hands, stroking his hair as he trembled in her arms, frightened after listening to the children's legend of the Pumpkin King. He stood there a minute more, lost in the memory of his mother's faded embrace before returning to his original task. He blinked in surprise as he looked over the desk, dozens of notes scattered about with harsh-looking letters 
scrawled over the pages. Uncle, Delano whispered, what have you been up to? These are infernal markings. While Wester was cut off from most of the known world, it had a small chapel of the Ecclesian order, with some overzealous youth acting as slayers looking to prove themselves to the last bishop remaining in the area. Associating with infernals was sure to bring violence to one's door. As he pored over the notes, his eyes still unbelieving, a neat collection of tomes atop the desk caught his attention. Tolano's heart raced as he recognized the stitched leather cover among the collection, identifying it as the selfsame book Uncle Aldrich had refused to give an explanation for. He hurriedly removed it from between its fellows, carelessly drawing his prize into the candlestick's flickering light. He almost yelped in alarm as the hungry little flame licked at a corner of the book. Jerking it back quickly, he cursed his own recklessness as he inspected the tome to see what damage had been done. To his surprise, it hadn't been burned at all, let alone singed despite its exceedingly dry pages. It must be one of those magic books, Delano exclaimed in wonder. Where did you get this, uncle? Opening the pages of the book, he froze as he stared in disbelief at the letters written in between the infernal writings and diagrams. He carefully set the tome down as he reverently reached into his coat pocket and withdrew an old, worn letter from within. Slowly opening the letter, he compared its contents with those of the tome. Joy and bewilderment swirled in his heart as his mother's handwriting met his astonished gaze. Was this hers? he muttered. If so, why would Uncle Aldrich lock it away without telling me? Unfamiliar as he was with the speech of demons, he settled for the words of his mother, growing ever more perplexed as the book recounted his mother's despair at the loss of her daughter to plague and her impossible quest to breathe new life into the child. Everyone in Valdera knew that bringing back those once dead was an impossible task, as not even magic could reverse the course of fate. Even the famed spire of Dymas, which the gnomes relied on to preserve their numbers, simply redirected a gnome's soul back into a mortal shell that held no memory of their previous life a far cry from the true resurrection many had sought for in the past. Necromancy was possibly the closest one could come to resurrecting the dead, but only an empty shell would return, devoid of any conscious thought or reason. Yet some held that the soul of the creature truly did return, and that the lack of will was due to a fault in the magic rituals used in bringing the creature back from the dead. Others... Delano included, thought such arguments ridiculous, viewing the skeletons and zombies as little more than bones being forced to move by magical means, and not the product of a trapped soul forced into servitude. Though he viewed magic employing the language of infernals, which necromancy certainly required, as nothing more than a tool, even he acknowledged the dangers such practices brought to the lands of Wester. However, as Delano continued to pour through the pages, the harsh lettering becoming more appealing as he studied his mother's anguish, he began to question if he had not been short-sighted. What if man could truly conquer death? Surely, none should be forced to part with loved ones before their time. Nor should mothers grieve for lost children, while children question why their fathers lie in strange boxes cold and unmoving. His thoughts were interrupted as he inspected his mother's final entry in the Book of Miracles. I have made a grave mistake. Nothing can bring my beloved Diana back to me, and nothing should. The cost is too great. Aldrich was right. I have done a great disservice to my family by turning to such magic. I can only hope he can seal this book away, and the Council of Wester looks favorably upon my case. Delano could scarcely believe what he'd read. Too great a cost? This was her child! What cost could have possibly been so dear 
that she'd abandon her quest. He'd never heard of Diana, but it would explain why his mother had sometimes had a sad, distant look on her face when she thought Delano wasn't watching. As his rage began to grow, a chill suddenly ran down his spine as he looked at the collection surrounding him. Many of the tomes and notes were certainly infernal in origin, and from the looks of it, Uncle Alderic had been collecting these for quite some time. Magic tomes such as the one in his hands were no doubt rare and valuable, impossible to obtain by regular means. What if, and here Delano hesitated, Uncle Alderic was not so pious as he'd led others to believe. Indeed, a good place to hide would be in the place one would least expect. The Ecclesian Order had little power in Wester due to the undead infestation. It would make sense to allay suspicion and to become privy to the whereabouts of such rare works by gaining authority in the local clergy. Had Aldrich murdered his mother for the tome now in his hands? Had her sickness been a devious ruse? If so, why had his mother's book only surfaced now? Delano hastily put everything back in order inside Aldrich's strong room, phasing through the door and returning quickly to his bedchamber. The thought that his beloved uncle might have murdered his mother, tormenting him as he descended into fitful slumber. Over the next few weeks, Delano took it upon himself to learn the language of the Infernals, not trusting anyone, least of all his uncle, to know his newest field of study. He hadn't dared to return to the strong room, unsure if his intrusion had been discovered as his uncle's nightly vigils had become more frequent as of late. Eventually, Alderic left, citing Ecclesian order business with the slayers. He instructed Delano to watch over the household until his return, expecting the journey to last about a month's time. Delano, the stoic man rumbled, once I return, I wish to discuss at length your nightly adventures. Delano's heart stopped momentarily. Had he been found out? Delano had been careful to avoid the strong room, but perhaps Aldrich had been watching him more closely than he'd realized and had noticed his change in behavior. Or perhaps a servant had seen him leave. I, Delano stuttered, certainly, uncle, I will await your return. He gave what he hoped was a convincing smile. Return safely, Uncle Alderic. The old man simply turned himself about as he began his journey, his priestly robes billowing behind him as the wind began to howl, heralding a coming storm. No sooner had he left than Delano went to the strong room, phasing through the door once more to glean more information about his mother and her research, desperately searching for the answer as to what had driven Aldric to murder his mother. He had little time. Delano was unsure why Aldrich hadn't simply cut him down then and there, if he truly was willing to kill his own kin. No. The man was surely crafty if he'd been able to pose as a man of piety for so long. Delano's sudden disappearance would surely draw unwanted scrutiny from the council, leading to the eventual discovery of the infernal collection and confrontation with the slayers. Delano couldn't very well go to the council himself, as they were especially sensitive to any dealings with infernal powers, and the young slayers they employed were known to be overly impulsive. At best, he could expect the confiscation of the entirety of the strong room and the loss of any remaining traces of his departed family. More likely, a cruel lynching was what awaited him for simply being related to the man. Then, a thought struck him as his fear and doubt transformed to excitement and exultation. Alderic, no, Uncle Alderic, had said nightly adventures. It was true his studies of the infernal language had been conducted during the night in order to evade detection. Uncle Alderic had likely found out about his intrusion and had noticed his sudden interest in infernal language. Perhaps Uncle Alderic was testing Delano 
waiting to see if he was worthy of his trust and guidance. Delano's mother and uncle had been extremely close while she lived, and the thought of his uncle murdering her was preposterous. Delano was a skilled magic user, and Uncle Aldrich had said as much during his studies. If anything, this was an opportunity for him to show his uncle how his mother's research could be turned for the good of all humanity. Aldrich sighed as the weight of the satchel he carried dug uncomfortably into his shoulder. After a month of investigation and pursuit, he and the Slayers had managed to root out a band of cultists intent on raising the dead in Wester's catacombs to destroy the jack-o'-lanterns dotting the town in some crazed attempt at preventing the Pumpkin King from rising. Truth be told, if they'd just gone about destroying the jack-o'-lanterns with a hammer, Aldrich doubted the council would have done much about it as the legend of the Pumpkin King was a harmless fairy tale told to scare children into behaving. But when it became apparent they'd obtained a book of necromantic origins and planned on using it, he and the Slayers had been summoned to deal with the threat. Strangely, the cultists had been comically unprepared for their assault. Doors unlocked, traps prematurely triggered, and several misplaced weapons were discovered afterwards. Even more puzzling was the large number of jack-o'-lanterns ringing the area, as the cultists' unhinged shrieking at the sight of such innocuous decorations made Aldrich wonder why they decided to use that particular location as the site of their ritual in the first place, if the object of their horror was so prevalent in the area. This wasn't the first time he'd been called on for his magical expertise in disposing of dangerous necromantic works. Yet... He'd hoped after having been forced to accept his sister's accursed book of necromancy, after the book's previous custodian had been killed by a crazed cultist, the incident would have encouraged the council to relegate him to simply guarding the horrid collection, thus affording him more time to remove the curse on his sister's portrait. Aldrich looked down at his arm, the rainbow-hued opal armlet glistening in the subdued daylight. His sister's portrait had been cursed shortly after her death, and had since caused two slayers to succumb to a subtle madness after prolonged exposure. While the accessory he wore helped to stave off the effects in the short term, it could not guard against its effects indefinitely, and he'd been forced to hastily seal it away in one of the manor's rooms, placing all manner of charms and wards to prevent its influence from affecting the entire household. He'd barely convinced the council to allow him to continue his attempts at cleansing the cursed painting. They'd only agreed after he'd offered his abode as a means to safely store all sorts of dangerous, indestructible magical items far from the general populace of Wester. As the manor grounds came into view, the weary old man's steps seemed to lighten. Almost home, he muttered softly. He hadn't forgotten his promise to speak to Delano, but he'd certainly changed his tune as to what he was intending to do. Initially, Aldrich had been concerned with Delano's sudden interest in learning the infernal tongue. The boy was certainly not as adept at hiding his studies as he thought, and Aldrich had intended to caution him against studying such dark knowledge. However, after meditating upon the matter, Aldrich thought to bring Delano into his confidence as to the true nature of his work. I'm getting too old for this, he groaned as he pushed open the wide doors. Delano would certainly be a worthy successor, if he is willing to learn how the enemy conducts themselves. It is also past time I told him what truly happened to his mother. The weary traveler stopped in the entrance, as he realized he hadn't seen the usually attentive groundskeeper as he crossed through the normally immaculate grounds. A sense of unease grew in his chest as the usual bustle of the manor was instead replaced with silence and stillness. Whether it was a maid cleaning the halls, the crackling of the cook's fire, or the steward's hurried steps as he tended to the multitude of tasks required of him, there was always someone going about their work in the manor, Delano? Aldrich called out. Where are you? I've returned. 
Only the echo of his voice answered him as he wandered the halls, searching and calling for Delano and the various servants of the manor. His voice stuck in his throat as he came to the door of his study. A long trail of dried blood led from the door into the hall, the open door revealing that much of the study had been ransacked. A dried pool of blood on the desk testifying to the conflict within. Weariness forgotten, Alderic hurriedly followed the bloody trail, praying to the heavens above that Delano was safe, that he'd gotten out before whatever unholy spawn had found the boy. As he rounded the corner, still following the macabre trail, his blood ran chill. The bodies of the servants were strewn about the floor, their spilled blood having been used to draw demonic markings on the floor and walls. Worse still, the strong room's door had been reduced to splinters, the protective charms cast aside like so much driftwood. He rushed past the grisly sight into the strong room. His fear turned into astonishment as Delano's hunched figure peeked over a multitude of haphazardly stacked books. No, 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 that's not it, Delano muttered. There must be more. It's still not right. Delano! The hunched figure whirled about, pointing a bloody knife at Alderic, before recognition dawned upon the man. Uncle Alderic, Delano exclaimed. Has it been a month already? I've been waiting for you. Delano, what has happened here? The young man grinned excitedly as he reached for one of the stacks of books, toppling the tower as he waved about an all-too-familiar leather-bound tome. I've almost figured out what went wrong with the mother's work. You see, the key to bringing back a soul in its entirety has to deal with... Aldrich wasn't listening to Delano's long-winded explanation as he spotted a familiar form behind the man. His blood began to boil as he recognized the corpse of his sister, the traditionally decapitated head sewn back onto her slender neck and holy stake removed from her heart. Infernal markings traced in blood ringed the body in the unmistakable fashion of necromancy. So, after I exhumed Mother's body, you dare desecrate her this way? Delano's shocked expression was clear to see as he stammered, But, but Uncle, I can bring her back. My mother, your sister. You think necromancy, that simple boy? Aldrich took two menacing steps toward the cowering man. While only a few inches taller than Delano, Alderic seemed to tower over him, righteous fury blazing in the old man's eyes. Necromancy is a tool of the infernals that tears a soul from its rightful place. Those from Elysium suffer torment as paradise is torn away only to be trapped in a vessel that allows them no escape from the horrors they are forced to commit. While those from Jihanna escape just punishment and become willing agents of the Infernals. Delano's shock transformed into anger of his own as he straightened himself to look square into Aldrich's eyes. Necromancy is just that, uncle, a tool. While Infernals may have granted us the tool, we need not use it as they intended. I have almost found a way to resurrect those we have lost using both the necromantic arts and the holy magics. Further, if this were so wrong, why does the goddess not keep the souls of Elysium from being whisked away? The goddess allows humanity to make their own choices. Eventually, we will have to answer for them when our time comes. The promise of immortality and escape from death by twisting the powers of his arch enemies is a devious lie crafted by the arc fiend of death and suffering himself. As Aldrich was about to continue, his eyes fell on the portrait hanging on the wall. Understanding dawned on him as he beheld Delano's crazed countenance. How long had he been exposed to the curse of madness? He was certainly exhibiting the symptoms. If there was any hope, 
of Delano coming back to his senses, he had to be removed from its presence first. Delano, Alderic murmured softly, your mother already explored this path and realized it had nothing to offer but further pain and suffering. He stretched open his arms to the pensive Delano, his voice pleading as he continued, Please, there is still time to turn back. Time to seek forgiveness for what has happened. I truly miss her, Delano. I do. But we must learn to live on together for a life unlived. Delano's glower softened as he fell into his uncle's embrace, his shoulders beginning to tremble as he sobbed into the dust-covered robes, embracing him in turn. I miss her so much, uncle. She shouldn't have been taken from us. Then father wouldn't have died. And... The tension in Aldrich's body abruptly left as he sighed in relief. He softly patted the sobbing man's head as he kissed his forehead. I know, son. I know. I miss her, too. Every day. I'm so sorry, uncle. I'm so sorry. A stabbing pain punctuated Delano's words as the knife in his hand drove itself deep into Alderic's back. Collapsing in pain, blood began filling his lungs as he reflexively began casting a spell of healing on himself, only for his voice to be silenced by a spell of Delano's own. I'm so sorry, uncle, Delano trembled, but I can't stop when I'm so close. You'll forgive me. When this is all over, you'll see that it was all worth it. Aldrich had no strength to move, the exhaustion from the journey having taken its toll, rendering him incapable of stopping Delano as his killer used the fresh blood to carefully finish the markings wringing the corpse. As Aldrich's life ebbed out, he could just make out the sight of Delano conducting the ritual to raise his mother's corpse, her body taking on much the same semblance as it did in life, as it wordlessly stood. Before all went dark, he witnessed the newly born necromancer's hope give way to shock, before a silent scream of rage twisted his features, leaving the necromancer to face. Alone, a life unlived.